Today we're working on my 2008 BMW 335i with the N54 motor. Uh, it has 180,000 miles on it. I've had it for about 40,000 miles. I've never actually cleaned the intake valves on this car. So 180,000 miles, I don't know when the previous owner did it, but it has at least 40,000 miles on it since I've had it. So they're probably quite dirty at this point and I want to attempt cleaning it. I won't be walnut fasting in this video. So this is what I'm going to attempt using here. Um, it is intake valve cleaner. It's meant to be sprayed into your actual intake when the car is running and there's directions on the back on how to use this to clean direct injection cars uh, for maintenance every like 10 or 15,000 miles. But it's a really super strong, heavily concentrated formula that's supposed to be quite aggressive and I want to try it by spraying the intake valves. I actually got two cans. I don't know how much I'll need, but I got two cans for 13 bucks. There was a sale at Advanced Auto Parts, two for one, so it worked out to be a good deal. So my idea is I'm going to isolate each valve, make sure they're in a the closed position, let them fill up, let that whole chamber fill up with this cleaner, let it soak for a while, get a wire brush, scrub it, and then suck out the old fluid and wipe it down to hopefully clean them without needing to walnut blast. At least that's the hope. So we're gonna start by starting to remove some of the stuff and end goal will be to remove the actual intake manifold. So this car actually has dual cone intakes and it has the cowl delete package if you see over here. So it makes it a little bit easier but if you don't have that you gotta do the usual step required to remove the cowl as if you're changing your spark plugs. Um, and I'd like to get as much stuff out of the way as possible to make this easy to work on. So to start with, there's a couple Torx bits up at the front here holding this intake piece here. So I'm going to go after those. So there's just two T20 Torx up at the front here. You can lift this up and out of the way. Like so. Next up we'll go after this piece here. You just got to squeeze from the sides. And then it's got vacuum in it, so be prepared. You can actually hear the vacuum. So I've removed it from here, and it comes along till here. If you press in on this, you probably have to use two hands. You can pull that straight out just to get this out of the way. Makes, makes life a little easier, so I'll do that now. All right, so I got this piece pressed in here. You can pull it straight out. So I just pulled that out of the way just to make life easy. You don't necessarily have to do that, you can just leave it off to the side. Now we'll go after the dual cone intakes here. I'll take them off from back here so there's more room. Can just get that out like so. We'll go after the one back here. These are 5 mm Allens. Now we have to go after this uh, charge pipe here. We gotta back it off the intake manifold, so grab yourself a pick tool, get it underneath it right here, and we'll just actually aim to remove it right from the car. So get on one side of it and just remove it from the car altogether. Watch the vacuum lines and whatnot, they can be brittle. Uh, I'd like to have room there to be able to back off the throttle body. So I'll have to play with it, but for now I'm going to get four, um, get to the four uh, 10 mil bolts that hold the throttle body on. I'm going to attempt to get to them with my ratcheting 10 mil wrench here.
one. Careful not to drop them when you're working here because it can be hard to retrieve. I want to leave that one in until I crack the other two free. I think it'll make life a little easier. I'm going to attempt to remove these lines. I'm just going to try to remove those diverter valves altogether. So we got this diverter valve backed off, or this line to the diverter valve backed off. That way we can take an assembly. For now I'm going to lay these up on top of the intake handle. Like so. That way we have clear access to the other throttle body bolt. Now this thing has lots of flex. Okay, so now we can move the throttle body in such an angle that we can get to the harness that goes here and there's a vacuum line. There's actually a vacuum line on the side here. If you guys can make it out right there. If you see right there. So you gotta squeeze the side of it. To be able to pull it off. Definitely a two-handed operation. So I'll do that off camera and then I'll show you guys when I'm ready to remove the throttle body. So I've removed this line off of the actual throttle body. Now there's just this one harness connection. Now we can remove the throttle body altogether from the car. I lower those back down out of, the, out of our way. Now back here, there's a harness going into the intake manifold here. You want to lift up on it. There's a little tab. And that comes straight off. And I'm going to start loosening the bolts for the intake manifold now. These are 11 mil. So I've noticed that only the last one here is a bolt. The rest are nuts. It's a bit longer. It was relatively easy to get to this point thus far. Now if we go around here. I've done this harness here. You may have this piece clicked into your uh, manifold right there. On your car. But mine wasn't already clicked in. So no big deal there. So if you guys look down in here. This piece here. There's a couple tabs. They have to be depressed. As if you saw there, that piece clicks into that other piece. That's bolted into the manifold. There's actually this harness here for your oil filter housing. You gotta depress it and lift up on it like that to be able to clear the manifold. Now, it's kind of hard to show you guys, but down in here, if you look, if you notice right about there, this piece has to come out. 
You just have a harness clipped in. So now I'm using this to just pop that harness out of the way. I don't know if you can see there, but I'll show you when I have this out. Now this tube back here is very stiff. So you gotta kinda angle around it and out. Now we can take the actual intake manifold out. And I didn't want to mess around with the vacuum lines for the diverter valve, so I took it all out complete. One last thing I want to show you is this piece right here. This little notch here, right there, it kind of just, it's a rubber notch and it kind of clips onto the, right there, it clips onto the manifold. So you got to push that toward the back of the car to get clearance. Now the moment of truth, let's take a look at the intake valves. These look pretty bad. Check that out. Nasty. About as bad as it gets, I think. As you can see, it's just caked right up. It's like the worst that it could ever be. The front ones look a little cleaner. As you can see. Look really rough. They're nasty. Who knows if they've ever been done? There you go. Nice, there's a good shot of it. Now my middle two intake valves appear to be naturally in a closed position. So I'm gonna try spraying it now. You can see. Just eating it away. It's definitely designed to eat up carbon. Awesome. Looks like it's doing all the work for me. Now see here this next one here. It's hard to really get the light in there, but I'll try to get to get you guys a good shot as I spray it in. This stuff's supposed to be very safe and it's designed for this. It's so powerful that it's supposed to actually eat away carbon just as vapor from spraying it in your intake manifold. And it appears to be just eating away and dissolving that carbon just naturally. It's super strong, but safe for aluminum, safe for O2 sensors, safe for valve seals, supposedly. If so, this is pretty awesome stuff.
Something else was pulled up in there. You know, I, I really think I see results just like that. That would be amazing if it's that powerful. But let's keep putting more in. I'm trying to get it down the walls. Just gonna put a bit more on this one. Definitely having a chemical reaction. Let's go over to this one now and fill it right up. I think it's a good idea to spray it down the walls just to rinse them. And that way you can fill up the port without making a big splashy mess. Even the other port is still having a reaction. So let's let the stuff sit and see what it does. So just to give you guys an idea, it's been a few more minutes and the reaction settles out. As you can see. So I'm not sure the, stat the state of those at this point. Just to give you an idea, I'm trying to get rid of the flare. So, it settles out. What I'm going to try to do is just get a screwdriver in there and feel around to see if there's still chunks on there and or if it dissolved at all. So I poked around with a screwdriver and funny enough, after all the bubbling stopped, I don't even feel chunks or restrictions. I just feel the metal valve. I don't know if it actually did all the work. That would be really good. But, you know, I don't have my hopes up too high. Now the fun part. I just got a cup like that and uh, 
the top of a soap dispenser to try to suck out all the gunk. Here's what came out. Just as expected, pure liquefied gunk. It completely dissolved it. I'm not trying to hype this up right now, but I'm gonna wipe it down with a cloth and I'm gonna bring the camera in. All right, so it's gotten to the point that whatever's actually sitting on top of the valve is just a paste, like so. Completely dissolved everything. So I'm just cleaning up pieces like that. The valves are just have this paste sitting on top. It's hard to make out, but I'm using a pick tool. And literally getting behind the valve. And there's just nasty paste sitting on the valve. Otherwise the metal, if you see the stem, completely clean. So this stuff did all the work. I didn't do any scrubbing. To give you an idea of how clean the stem is, I'll, I'll give it a rinse with this stuff here. Let that drain down. Check it out. It's perfect metal. You see the complete stem. Spotless. If you guys can make that out. Completely clean. Everything dissolved. All that bubbling and everything was just the product doing its job. And it left. The only tricky part is sucking out this uh, paste. If I had something to extract it, or to like, like something suction based, to suck that out, it would make this job easier. I don't though. So I'm going to try to just scoop it out and then when you start the car it will naturally clean itself out worst case but I'm just basically at the point where I'm cleaning this up as much as I can before I move on to the next valve. On this valve over here I just let the cleaner do the work. I just let it sit while I was messing around with that pasty stuff on that valve. And if you let it sit long enough it just does everything. Probably about half an hour now. Look at that valve. It's spotless. And the walls and everything, all this is just, it's just coming off. Like to give you an idea, you don't have to go crazy on this. You can just like get it semi clean, mostly clean, start it up, it'll burn off all this. And you're good, but to give you an idea, I'm wiping the wall. You can see the aluminum right there in the middle. So it's just literally, that was the worst valve. It was just caked. And it's, you can see both valves. Perfect. Incredible results. I'm like super impressed with this stuff. Just nuts. Look at that. I don't see the need to walnut blast when you got that kind of results. They're perfect. All clean. I can't get the last of the fluid out of there, but obviously if the stems are naturally that clean from soaking in it, the base of the valve is just like a brand new valve right now with the zero scrubbing. Amazing. So I'll try to clean that up as much as I can. Then when I'm bumping the starter to turn the rest of the valves over, I will show you guys. If you look inside there, you can see the kind of results we got. I, um, anything, you know, it's not completely shiny silver, but the actual valves themselves are completely clean. And there's just a bit of paste there that I couldn't get that with the paper towel. But otherwise, it's completely just crystal clean. See the valve stems are completely silver again. So once I start it up and it burns off anything in there, it's going to be literally like perfect as if we did like a walnut blast. The same level. Just going to zoom in on one of the valves here. As you can see, it's just all metal, all silver, completely clean, dissolved everything. So that's how clean I'm going to leave it before I move on to the next one. 
you know, everything's dissolved. Anything that's remaining in there is just a bit of a paste from leftovers that I couldn't wipe with a paper towel. And it'll get burnt off when we start the car. But really happy with the results. I think they turned out tremendous. Can't complain at all. Super happy with those results. So, I'm going to keep moving on. Keep cleaning and wiping with the microfiber. And when I'm ready to bump the motor over, I'll bring the camera back. Now we're going to attempt to um, bump the starter over. Here we are focused in on the starter. We're going to take this connector off here. All right, now to bump it over, we're just going to use a set of alligator clips. We're going to connect one end to here. Now if I just tap right here, it's going to kick the starter over. As you can see, down in there, there's a bit of fluid left over, which is just going to fall onto the cylinder just fine. It'll get burnt off. Just to give you guys an idea, here is a valve that has yet to be cleaned. See how bad that is? You can see number two is now closed. So I'm going to try spraying in there now, make sure no leaks. I'm going to remove the spade connector so there's no chance of it bumping over by accident. So that, could, that should give you an idea of what I did there. I just bumped the starter over until it was obvious that the valves were closed. And we're letting the product do its thing right now, as you can see. So, you know, I'll spare you the details now. I'm going to focus on just doing that with the remainder. And I'll show you once I'm all set and ready to button things back up. So that, now you, you've seen how to bump the motor over. I'm going to do whichever two are closed at any given time until I'm done. So I went to the auto parts store and I picked up some brake clean. And I'm just using that to spray down the walls, get rid of any oily residue. So I'm not using the brake clean to dissolve anything. I'm using it just to clean the oily residue on the side wall. Then I'm getting a toothbrush and I'm just scrubbing in there. So once I got the sidewalls relatively clean, I just suck out the old fluid. Next step will be to blow out any residue or any more chunks using an air. Compressed air, I got that from the store as well, just a duster. If there's any chunks or anything remaining, they'll just end up on the sidewall and you can wipe them, pull them out. But this looks pretty good. I'm gonna just follow up with a quick rinse. in there will evaporate. To give you an idea, this is where I'm done. This is my end result before I move on to the next port. There's zero carbon in there. The walls are pretty much washed clean too via the brake clean. 
and that little bit of fluid waiting on top of the valves will just go will get burnt off or evaporate while I'm working here because this displaces um, whatever was in there before but they're completely clean now as you can see completely clean and it wasn't really that hard. I didn't have to do any scraping or scrubbing or anything like that. I'm done with this port up here as well. As you can see, like if I was really anal, I could get that to be completely spotless and scrub the co the corners with the toothbrush. But it's just superficial and it's going to get dirty really quickly anyway again. But I'd argue that, that rivals walnut blasting or even surpasses it in terms of the cleanliness. And I did, you know really wasn't that hard to get to this point you know about two to three hours of your time you'll be here you don't have to be too anal and go crazy scrubbing You'd, I basically just wash, wash the oily residue that's left over by the first cleaner and I don't want to use brake cleaner for too long because it can dry out stuff so I just basically only had it in there for a couple minutes so it doesn't affect the valve seal or anything like that the original stuff um, doesn't affect uh, anything so as you can see, that's the level we're going for. So wash the walls with brake clean, scrub it with the toothbrush, get a compressed air can, blow it out. If any chunks come up, wipe them, pull them out, and then one last rinse with the brake cleaner to get to that level. As a quick tip, something you want to be conscious of is if you're using brake cleaner and you're bumping the starter, any vapors um, could ignite into a fire due to the sparks that can be created when you're ju jumping it. The other stuff I was using wasn't flammable, didn't matter. This stuff is, so I gotta make sure that there's no vapor, there's no nothing before I try to bump it over. I let a little bit of fluid get into the last cylinder because there was, uh, the valves weren't completely seated. And so to, as a response to that, I've actually pulled the spark plug so that, I know for a fact that none got it anywhere else. If you have any doubts that you let fluid in there, remove the spark plug so that you can expel anything that may have gotten into the into the cylinder. When I looked at the actual spark plug it was wet on that cylinder so very important that you don't try to bump it over or start the car with any fluid inside there because you could hydro lock, bend valves, etc. So in this instance here I'm ready to bump over just to do two last ports with the brake clean method that I just showed and I gotta make sure it's all bone dry and there's no vapor around that could be flammable or dangerous. So I'm pretty much done, but I'd feel way better about it if I um, if I was able to turn the motor over just to make sure no liquid made it past the valve that's gonna compress and cause trouble. So, and I didn't take the spark plugs out initially because I didn't want it to turn over too easily. I wanted it to have some compression fighting it so when you bump the starter it would just get right, you know, just barely move just to the point where you can watch the valves close I figured it would be a little easier. Now all the spark plugs are out and I'm just going to give it a few pumps. You may see that cloth jumping as it pushes anything out that may have made it in. Unlikely, but it be a couple cylinders. Um, a couple cylinders probably got uh, at least one or two had wet spark plugs. So let's give it a bump and again be conscious of the vapors and whatnot. Make sure it's all dry before you do this. As you see at the back here, nothing came out of the intake ports because there's no compression fighting it. Over here, where I had some concern. A little bit came out of one cylinder there and I had concern that I let some get in at the back and it did. So I, it's a good thing I did that. And I'd recommend you guys do that. It's not a big deal to take your plugs out. Make sure you push everything out, all the gunk. And that way your car doesn't run like crap for the first couple minutes after doing this work. Because now the intake valves opened, dumped any fluid that was inside there down into the cylinder and then it got expelled out the spark plug holes. So, you know. No chance of issue now. Now I've replaced the spark plugs after blowing out all the any fluid that may have gotten past. I cleaned up the mating surface with a cloth and some cleaning solution so that the 
gaskets can bite down properly. So I went out and uh, things had ch a chance to evaporate nicely. So you can see inside there. You can kind of start to see the top. You can see the top of the valve now. They're all looking pretty good. Just to kind of demonstrate how clean everything became, even the top of the valve and everything is all clean. So they're all nice and clean. Walls are relatively clean. I'm ready for reassembly now. So I'd recommend that you guys get uh, gaskets for your intake manifold. Um, mine are still soft and pliable and I didn't have a chance to get a set. So worst case, if I have any issues down the line, I'll be replacing these. But it would be a good idea to get those O-rings and replace them while you're in there. So keep that in mind before you do the DIY. So I'm going to get started reassembling, you know, it's obviously just a reverse of uh, removal, um, so I'll just quickly document it and we'll get rolling on uh, reassembly now. I got the intake manifold back in place. I don't have a torque wrench, I'm just using my experience and, and whatnot, but if you want to do it properly, uh, you want to torque these two 11 foot pounds and you want to start from the inside and work your way out. Now I'll go after some of the connectors and whatnot that I removed. I don't have the torque spec on those, but they should be similar to the intake manifold, around 11 foot-pounds. I'm going to reinsert this clip here. Store this uh, cover for the engine. I can put this air intake duct back into place now. Okay, final step is going to be placing this uh, vacuum line here. There's just a rubber line, vacuum line that comes to here. I'm ready to start the car now. So I'm going to clean up my tools. So I'll get my camera set up, take it around the back, watch the exhaust pipes to see how much smoke comes out after this job. I'm going to record the first start after doing the work. I'm going to try it now. So it appears to have burned through pretty much everything. I had to shut it off once and restart it due to the engine malfunction that appeared on the iDrive. So it said reduce power, etc. So I restarted it. I have a check engine light now probably because it was a slight misfire during startup. I'm going to clear that, let the car run for a few minutes to burn everything off and then we'll go for a drive. So I'm 
driving it around now, a couple observations. I actually um, went on the highway and the first time I, I put it into about third gear, 4,000 RPM, the first time I punched it, a bunch of white crud came out the back once and then after that it was done. I think any residue or any residual that was left on the valves at high RPMs got blown away, final cleaning. And I'm just test driving it around right now, seeing how it feels. Um, I'll report back soon. Just to give you guys an idea, the car feels real quick right now. It feels great after doing this. It feels strong. Yeah, it's feeling great. So all in all, it feels smoother at idle. It feels like it's got a little more grunt down low. It feels like it takes less uh, throttle to accelerate. And it seems like there's a bit more of a growl down low, just partial throttle, just in the engine note. And I feel a power increase. It's cool out tonight. So, and the car didn't feel too far off. I just feel like it's picked up something for sure. It feels like 20 wheel horsepower maybe more like it just has a different feel to it less of a torquey kind of shove and more of like a, just an effortless um, climb and speed it's happening a little easier so overall um, it just feels better I'm sure this will help with fuel economy um, tipping on the throttle and whatnot feels great it just feels like uh, it's done wonders for the car and in my opinion, I think I got it as clean as walnut blasting, and I spent about thirty dollars um, with the paper towels and the brake clean and all the stuff I used. It wasn't more than thirty dollars. So, all in all, I'm quite happy. I'm just driving normally now, but I'll just give it like a partial throttle. It feels boosty. It feels great. It feels smooth, and it was great overall. This was. Definitely overdue looking at the condition of the valves. Very happy. And uh, maybe this will be a bit controversial to say, but I think I did as good a job as walnut blasting and I spent a few hours, you know, all, all in. I took breaks, I left things alone, I let it evaporate. But my total work time wasn't more than about two and a half hours, maybe three. So definitely doable at home. You guys don't necessarily need to buy the walnut uh, kit or even rent it. Uh, you know, I know it's a pain for a lot of people to do it at home because they don't even have a compressor. So I think uh, this is definitely a viable uh, alternative. Walnut blasting uh, isn't always required. Try out that uh, cleaner that I showed you, the direct injection intake valve cleaner. Um, I'm very happy with the results and uh, I wish you guys good luck. Thanks for watching.